Namaskar everyone. Today I'm going to talk, talk about a topic that is frequently discussed and a lot of people have different concepts and uh, perceptions about it. It's mantra chanting. For this session I want to thank again my spiritual gurus and I want to especially thank my grandparents because of which I got into chanting really early in life and they got me into the practice of chanting as early as age 4 and age 5. So chanting. Firstly, what is chanting? Chanting is uh, the process of bringing in your mind again and again on the same word or words. Mantra, the word mantra, what does it mean? Mana, mind. So mind control is mantra. Now a lot of people have this perception that mantra chanting uh, is connected to Hinduism uh, or it's primarily a practice that Hindus follow, which is not correct. Mantra chanting is a Vedic tool. It goes back to very ancient times, but it's a tool and a practice that is adapted by all religions. So mantra chanting is uh, popular or practiced in all religions. There are Islamic mantras, there are mantras for Buddhism, mantras for Jainism, the Christians have mantras, of course the Hindus have mantras, the Sikhs have mantras, uh, the Parsis have mantras. So it, it's mantra chanting is a tool. It's not about religion. It's about training your mind. Now mantras can broadly be divided into three categories. Uh, mantras for peace or I can say chanting for peace, chanting for creativity, creations, creative mantras and chanting for destruction, destructive mantras. So what is happening, firstly let me explain what is happening when you're chanting. When you sit down and you chant, what you're doing is, now at any given time of, uh, of a moment, if you, any point you see, you focus on your thoughts, there are so many thoughts crossing through your mind. Even right now as you watch the video, you will be thinking so many thoughts at the background, you'll be listening to what I'm saying. But uh, some thoughts could be looking about my sari, about my background, about me, about some work that you're spending and you need to go attend to it. See the number of thoughts that are simultaneously going through your mind, right? Which is why chanting is such a powerful tool because it trains the mind to remove your energies, your focus, your thoughts from everything and to bring to that one word. Initially, when you start chanting for beginners, it takes a lot of effort and time because all the time your mind will wander. But as you keep on practicing more and more, your mind gets used to the idea of chanting, which is the idea of bringing in focus and thought to that single point, that single word or the multiple words that you're chanting on. So what it does is it teaches us as humans to have more focus in life. It also teaches us uh, the process also brings in about a discipline that the mind must listen to us. When we start chanting, we tell our mind, forget the focus of everything else, come to this one point and focus only that one point. So this simple technique is actually making a huge difference to our lives because it's bringing in focus and it's bringing in discipline. People who are chanting uh, for a long time or who regularly chant uh, easily focus easily sort out their minds, their confusions are far less, they are able to be more productive in whatever they do and they have very strong willpowers. These are people that are not easily influenced by negatives around, by bad company, by anything that peer pressure. So I feel as parents it's very important to get your children into chanting really early in life because what it teaches them is it teaches them to be focused on them. It, it's a powerful tool when you want to save your children from peer pressure and negative environment because kids who are chanting are far more firm and strong within themselves. Their mind is far more clear, calmer, more focused. So as parents, I would request you that it's a great tool. Whatever religion you are, whatever your faith may be, whatever deity you want to chant for, that's completely your choice. But do chant and get your children into chanting because it's the easiest and the best way to handle your mind. It will keep the children away from addictions. It will keep you stronger and not let you fall into depression and all negatives. Now coming back to the main three types of mantras. I'm going to quickly explain those as well. So mantras for peace. 
mantras for creativity and mantras for destruction. Now the underlying principle is that when we chant continuously, we are doing two things. One is focusing the mind, but there's one more thing that we are doing simultaneously. We are creating energy, right? Because our th thoughts also create energy. So when we constantly chant on that one particular word or a particular set of words or a particular sentence, we are also generating energy. Now, energy can be broadly divided into three categories, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Sattva is the most static, peaceful energy where you are just being, which is supposed to be a natural energy, sattva gun, just to be. Rajas is creative energy, when we have ambition, when we want to create something in our life, when we are aiming at success, reproductive, uh, you know, reproduction is also part of creation, right? So not just physical, but also in terms of ambitions, etc. It all comes under Rajas Gun. Then there is Tamasik, Tamas Gun, which is destructive. Now, uh, why would someone chant destructive mantras, right? One, would, one could question that. So destructive mantras are used to destroy the negatives in our life to overcome the negatives of the mind. And of course, uh, part of Tantra, which is which I would say the dark side of uh, the practice, or uh, whether you want to call it black magic or Tantra or witchcraft or whatever you want to name it, the misuse and the dark side of the same practice is when we do destructive mantras to destroy your enemy or to destroy a particular individual or destroy uh, anyone, anyone else, it becomes harmful in nature. So rather than being elevating, then it becomes a truly destructive act. And uh, I always suggest that these practices should not be uh, indulged in because over the long period of time, there's always karma that is looking at you and is following you. Even when no one knows it, karma always knows and karma always looks at you. So if you indulge into these tantric or these negative practices that are selfish and destructive, it's always the result sooner or later will always come back to you. So coming back to the three categories again, mantras for peace, sattva gun. These are mantras that strengthen the sattva gun in your life. They bring peace to you and uh, they create harmony in your life. So if you're feeling conflicted, confused, lost, chant peace mantras and they will make you sleep better. They will calm things in the family. They're good for the home vibration. And uh, in case any of you want to uh, get mantras from me, no, irrespective of your religion, because I can give you mantras from all religions. And uh, if you personally want to know about mantras that you can chant, you can please, uh, you're welcome to email me. My email address is uh, uh, in the description below at the link. You can also subscribe to me or like this video to encourage me and support my work. Now coming to the second part, the Rajasik, the Rajas Gun, the creative mantras. So if any, if at any point you feel your work is slow, you want more money to come in, you want more success to come in, you want obstacles to be gone and you want to do well, or you want to head towards prosperity, you're chanting because you want to have a child, then you do creative mantras. Uh, these mantras are basically to bring in the creative energy into your life and help you move forward to create whatever or achieve whatever goals you're looking at. Lastly, the uh, the tamas, the tamasic mantras or the destructive mantras. The gods uh, in Hinduism are primarily Kali and Rudra form of Shiva or Shiva in certain forms. Uh, there are many other forms of, uh, of tamasic deities, but primarily when I, when I say tamas mantras or tam tamasic as, as an energy, these are the deities that come to my mind. Now, mantras for these are done a, as I said, to destroy obstacles, to destroy your enemies. Now, what happens is when you in general say a prayer that, dear Lord, remove obstructions, remove enemies, it's a generic prayer. So you're not harming an individual, but in return, what you're asking for is the karma that is an obstacle and which is giving me a result of enemies, let that be removed. So it still becomes a positive prayer and it's okay to do the mantras uh, for such for such a name. So uh, you destructive mantras are done a to destroy the negative in us, destroy the greed, this overcome anger, 
overcome the negative feelings of depression and sadness, destroy all the negativity within us. Let us be evolved and elevated and rise above the negatives. You do these mantras, real knowledge will come to you. Uh, the illusions of life will break and you'll break free. You will spiritually evolve as a person. Secondly, the obstacles will be removed. You will overcome illnesses. A lot of times, um, people struggling with life-threatening diseases sometimes worship such forms as well. So primarily, these are the three forms of chanting that one can do. <clears throat> So what I'd like to request you is, think for a moment, right now in my life, what do I want? What is it that I'm seeking? And when you get clarity, see the categories that I've explained and pick your, your call that, okay, I'm looking at this, it fits into the Rajas category of mantras, or it fits into the peace category of mantras. So let me search mantras for this. They say that the mantra is the most powerful when it comes from a teacher or when it comes from an elder or when it comes from someone who's spiritually evolved because when they give you the mantra, they also give you the energy and the blessings for the mantra to be fulfilled and you to get success in your prayers. So <clears throat> if you're lucky or if you pray for it or seek, then you may uh, also be fortunate enough to find a guru that will give you a mantra it, it can sometimes completely change your life. Try that, seek, seek it, seek a guru. If not, you can just find the mantras, see which mantra connects to you. See, say the mantras. For example, if you're, uh, suppose you, you believe you have faith in Christianity and the most popular mantra is Ave Maria. Say Ave Maria a few times. See how you feel. If it resonates with you, if it makes you feel good, then you go for it. If you're Hindu and the man simple mantra Om, it makes you feel good, it changes your vibration immediately, go for it. Do some research and like I said, you're most welcome to write to me in case you want to know more about mantras. But my request and my genuine hope is that seeing this video, you will bring in the tool of chanting in your life. You will encourage family members and especially your children to get into chanting. <clears throat> the best ch time for chanting is early morning hours if you're a morning person. If you don't have time in the morning or you're not a morning person, evening and night is also a good time to chant. Chanting before sleeping is a great practice. Chanting first thing in the morning when you wake up is really, really good. It'll give you great energy through the day. If you don't have too much time, just take five minutes. That's all. Five minutes, just chant. That's it. Five minutes morning, five minutes night. During the day you get five minutes, do it. If you can't sit and chant, play the mantras, hear them. When you keep hearing them also, somewhere in your mind they stay and they, they keep resounding. It will change a lot of things in your life. So with this, I'm going to end this video with the hope that you are going to experiment with this powerful tool of chanting which is followed by most cultures across uh, the world because it is a life-changing tool. So please do start chanting. All the best.